All right, I want to welcome you. It is, hello, hello, hello. It is Wednesday, June the 22nd in the year 2022. Think about that, June 2, 2, 2022. A lot of twos in there, aren't there? All right, we are here to serve you as we love to do during our social media live events. And I wanted to uh, let you know that today we're going to be with you for about 30 minutes. We typically go longer when there are questions, and I'm very blessed to have with us here today, Jen, who is part of our team, and she's going to be grabbing the questions that you may have. Hello there. It's good to see you and posting them. So if you do have a question for me, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook or on Instagram, and you would love for me to address your question, then please uh, type it in and we will be literally running from platform to platform, grabbing those questions so that I can address them for you. And what Jen's going to be doing is she's going to be sending them to me uh, through um, text and we'll be addressing them. And Vladdy is here with me as well. So Vladdy is part of our team and she is definitely going to be here to to help uh, with anything for you. So we really feel that we are here as an organization to serve you. And we serve in a way that uplifts and up levels your life. And if that is a desire that you have is to improve one area or a couple of areas or many areas of your life, then you're absolutely in the right place. And we chose the topic for today's session to be called Create your own economy. Create your own economy. And whether you saw the topic for today's uh, session or not, that is what we've decided to uh, cover off for the first part of the call. And then we go into questions. Now, when you think about those words, create your own economy, I want to ask you a question. All right. And I'd like you to type it in the chat box, either on YouTube or chat on Facebook or on Instagram. What does it mean to you when you hear the words, create your own economy? What does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? All right. I want to see some of the answers that, that are there before I explain what it means to me and why we chose this particular topic for today. So what does it mean to you to create your own economy? What does that mean? Financial freedom, says Pam. Thank you, Pam. Great answer. I love that. Freedom and safety, says Marianne. Excellent answer. All right. Create your own self-image because you cannot create on the outside without creating on the inside first. Yes, that's absolutely true. Thank you. I love that. Okay, great. Any other answers, comments? Abundance and freedom, says Sue. Yes. I'm in charge of earning the money I want, says Denise. Definitely. Yes. Now we're getting there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Beautiful. All right, so we've got a few answers that have come in. And the truth is that, you know, the answers are correct. Like when we think about creating your own economy, why would you even want to do that? Well, you want to create your own economy because you do want the freedom. You want the freedom to do what you want, when you want. MSIs is another answer that we see here. Yes, absolutely. MSI stands for multiple sources of income. And the truth is that many of the top income earners in the world today have that multiple sources of income. As a matter of fact, we're launching a brand new program that we haven't even let our email list know about yet. It's called MSI Author, MSI Entrepreneur. And just this morning, I recorded a webinar that will be released soon, and it explains that. And the reason why we put it together is because we really want to guide people to create their own economy, regardless of whether you're working now, regardless of whether you have a job now or whether you're unemployed or regardless of uh, if you're an entrepreneur already. But you have a desire to create your own economy, meaning no limit to what you can earn, regardless of what's going on out there in the world, regardless of where the interest rates are, regardless of where inflation is today, regardless of what the um the forecasters are saying about the economy. You get to create your own economy and you create your own economy by starting with the decision that you're going to do so. 
Because the truth is that the power and the opportunity for you to earn the kind of money that you've probably only ever dreamed of before, or maybe even haven't dreamed of it before, is possible. There's no limit to what you can earn. Absolutely none. No limit to what you can earn and be enjoying the lifestyle that you have. Now, as you hear those words, there's no limit to what you can earn. That's not the way most people operate. They operate with a ceiling in mind, with a limit in mind, what's also known as an upper limit challenge. What's the upper limit challenge? The upper limit challenge is when you have a belief that you're only worthy of a certain kind of income or you're only worthy of living your life the way you're living it now. And you don't believe that more or better or dream life is possible for you. And that is simply a belief. So the great news about that is you can change it. You can absolutely change your beliefs to support the kind of life that you desire to live. However, let me just give a word of caution here. If you don't change the belief, you may in fact generate more income. You may create multiple sources of income. But if you have not changed the belief about who you are, what you're worthy of, what's possible for you, you will sabotage your success. You'll sabotage your success. It is essential that you have the belief of already being a successful person before you'll ever experience the result in your life. You've got to have it in your consciousness, in your mind. You've got to be thinking as a successful person. You've got to be thinking as a wealthy, abundant person before you'll ever have it in your heart. All right. Now that sounds like a very simple statement to make, and it is a simple statement to make, but it's not always easy. It's simple, but not always easy. Why? Because you're programmed. You have already been conditioned because you operate in a very specific way already. Human beings are habitual creatures. We are all habitual creatures. We habitually think, we habitually feel, we habitually act. So that means our behaviors are habitual as well. And I guarantee you that you're in habits now. And some of the habits that you're involved in right now are either supporting you or they're hurting you. They're either supporting you or they're hurting you. Now, if you may not even know what they are, you might not even know what those habits are. And it's not essential that you know exactly what those habits are. And why do I say that? I say that because you have to decide what you would love to create in your life first before you determine what beliefs you're going to build in order to manifest that or attract that in your life. There is a process. There are steps involved. And there's definitely effort. But it's fun effort. And you could call it work you know, the four letter word work, you could call it that, but it's fun work. It's enjoyable work and it's productive and it produces phenomenal results. So if you're looking to experience, as we saw with some of the answers, a greater sense of freedom and financial abundance by creating your own economy, understand that it all starts with your consciousness. It starts there it ends there, it resides there. So you must, and I say must very lovingly, get into the consciousness of knowing that what you desire is already here. Now, can you do that like that? Can you do it in a heartbeat? Definitely, you can do it in a heartbeat. But will you stay there? Will you reside there? Will you reside in that consciousness of feeling and knowing what you desire is already here? Not likely unless and until you become disciplined. Disciplined in a way that you are only giving your conscious attention to what you desire. Now, you first have to know, what do you want? What would you love? How would you love to be living your life? Including financial abundance, including creating your own economy. Now, what stops a lot of people from even thinking about what they would love are their belief systems. They may have been told as a young child that they can't have what they want to stop daydreaming, 
to stop asking for what they want. Why? Because their guardians or their parents told them so. Told them, you can't have that. Forget it. Why are you even asking? Now, have any of you heard those words before? I suppose you have. I did. I heard that often. I didn't think it was worthy of having a new pair of pants. I went to school in ripped clothes. I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed by the way that I looked because I knew I looked like a, a rug rat. I remember one time my cousin had come to pick me up and we were going to visit her mom. And I was actually in Toronto. I was north, north of Toronto at the time. And we were driving up to my aunt's cottage. And my father used to have a cottage right beside my aunt. But my father's cottage was a little building that he built. We called it a cottage. but And we went there when I was a child. But it was eight feet by 20 feet. It was one room. No electricity. No running water. No washroom. Like if we had to go to the washroom, we had to go out in the woods. There wasn't even an outhouse at the time. And my aunt, who had married a dentist and was living a very nice lifestyle, built this beautiful A-frame cottage, you know, timber frame. It was gorgeous. And I remember one time uh, she picked me up and we're driving up to see my aunt. And while we were on the drive, she said to me that, and she comes from a family of four kids. They're my cousins. And we come from a family of four kids. They have two boys, two girls. We have two boys, two girls. My mom and dad, her mom and dad. And so she was telling me that when we were younger, and of course, we all descended upon the cottage. You know, we all you know went there and had our fun weekends. And my father had bought a couple canoes. I mean, he couldn't really afford motorboats then. And we had these canoes and they were, you know, something that we played with. And we used to play a game called kick the can. And that was easy because if we were having like a can of beans for dinner, and sometimes that's what we ate was a can of beans for dinner. And we would use that can to play, like to create games, kick the can. And somebody would be it and they kick the can and then everybody run and hide and you have to go and find them. And the whole point of this story is that my cousin told me that the way that her family looked at my family is that we were the poor ones. We were the rugrats. You know, we, they were embarrassed to even be seen with us in town. And I remember, you know, they were, you know, well off, you know, definitely in a different uh, classification than we were. And I remember they attracted some new friends. And these were friends that, and I remember their last name was the Beam. Beam. And they were on the lake as well, the same lake we're on. And the lake that we're on, there were some places, it was in the Muskokas, if you know anything about north of Toronto. It's a beautiful area now and very, you know, very sought out. And uh, probably the property that we had there would now be worth a fortune. It wasn't back then. Um, But there were a number of people that were on this lake that were very wealthy. And my cousin and her family ended up making friends with this other very wealthy family and they used to come over. But my cousin was telling me that she used to feel embarrassed to um, to introduce her friends to her cousins because we look like rugrats, right? We're all dirty and, you know, quite often we didn't even have shoes on. And so we're running around in the woods and bare feet. They're filthy. You know, we had ripped clothes on or, you know, old clothes or hand-me-downs or whatever. And, uh, you know, I didn't even know that. Now, I didn't realize that, you know, as a child, you don't realize that. But as you get older and you go into school and you see the way, you know, it's like a competition, the way people dress. And of course, I was embarrassed by the way I looked. And that's what really inspired me to start earning money. And I started earning money at a young age because I knew my parents couldn't provide for me. I mean, they were struggling to keep the lights on, you know, to to put food on the table. And I only share that because... You know, that experience really conditioned me to understand the, uh, the, the challenges that there are when you're struggling. And it wasn't fun. I mean, I saw the way my parents were stressed. Stress is not a healthy thing. It's a destructive thing. I saw the way my parents fought over the lack of money. They weren't fighting over money because they didn't have it. They were fighting over the lack of money. And I saw the the way they'd get angry if any of the children, me included, I was the youngest of four, would request for something else. You know, when we wanted something like 
who do you think you are? And it wasn't just like a, oh, honey, you know, we just don't have the funds for that. It wasn't that at all. It was like an anger screaming, you know, so you, you get that kind of feedback and, you know, you hear it over and over again. What happens? You build belief systems, right? You're building a belief system that we live impoverished, that live poor, whatever. And that's the way it was. And so when I became a teenager, and even though I started earning money, I also watched my parents struggle with debt and they would borrow and borrow. I remember one time my father telling me the story that when they decided to buy their first home, which was a tiny little home, that my father went to two banks. And at that time, they weren't all online and they certainly weren't all communicating effectively, but he went to two different banks to get money. He went to one bank to get the down payment and went to another bank to get the mortgage for the house. And neither one knew that they were doing it because if they did, they probably wouldn't have given him the money. But that's what he did. So what did that create for him? Overload in debt, in, in, uh, in having these financial commitments. And I share that because that was the kind of economy that, you know, he knew and understood. And it was the way that he was raised. His mother struggled as well. And so typically when people are raised in environments where there's struggle, where there's lack, this is what they come to know to be true, to be true for them. And so even though there are other people out there in the world that are earning all kinds of money or millionaires or multimillionaires or whatever, they don't think it's possible for them. Why? Because they've been programmed. They've been programmed at a young age. But I can sit here and tell you that it doesn't have to be that way. You can reprogram your consciousness. You can reprogram yourself for success. But it starts with making a decision and moving into action. Like you will not be enjoying an abundance of success or an abundance of, of, you know, whatever it is that you desire, unless and until you make a decision that this is going to be the way it is for you and you get on with the work. And the work is fun work and it's daily work. And it's something that you must be committed to every single day. Now, one of the best tools that you can use to actually manifest the kind of life that you would love to live is by using a power life script. Now we have a program for that called powerlifescript.com. I believe everybody on the planet who desires more should be in that program, should buy that, should invest in it. And I say buy, it's an investment. It's an investment in yourself. And it's only $195. Like I think back to my power life script has been the one tool that's made the biggest difference in my life. The one tool that absolutely I swear has made the biggest difference in my life. So having said that, you know, here I am today, you know, as a millionaire, you know, coming from a, a very poor, impoverished environment, not formally educated, you know, set up with conditions that, you know, if, the, if they look at the way people manifest in their lives, you know, without making any change, I was definitely on the track for the same kind of lifestyle. But I got off that track. I made a decision that's not how I choose to live my life. Now, did the struggle really inspire me to do it? Definitely, it did. Now, where does struggle come from? It comes from, you know, continuing to reside in the consciousness of being in struggle. But what happens is in every human being, in every single person that's on this planet, you will have within you what's known as desire, right? Desire. And desire means that, it's, it's, it actually comes from a Greek word or a Latin word that means of the father, right? Of the father. And desire means that if you have the thought of having something or experience something, you also have the potential for creating it. And just know that. Just think about that for a moment. If you've had the thought to create something that you've never done before or to live in a way that you've never lived before or to create abundance, unlike any way that you've created abundance before, that potential is within you. And you don't have to look any further than within you, but you have to tap into that power. You have to bring up that power. I can show you how to do that. And so you create a script, a description of living this amazing life so that you can see it, so that you can feel it, so that you can embrace it, so that it really inspires you emotionally. And you record it, you follow the process that I teach in powerlifescript.com. And then you listen and connect emotionally to that outcome every day. And it will absolutely change your life 
and every part of your life, every part of your life. But you have to decide and you got to do the work. Now, I believe that Jen has already shared a question that was uh, oh, several questions, actually, that have already come in. So I'm going to go to questions now. And we're going to start with Palash. I was imagining and feeling good and applying what was taught. But today I receive a mail over my rejection by an incubator I applied. How do I get over it? All right. Understand this. As long as you reside in negative energy, you are in full on destruction mode. All right. That's not a judgment. It's an observation. It's awareness. It's important to know. And I love that you asked the question because you asked the question because you very likely know any energy that doesn't feel good. You are in destruction mode. Right. How do you get over it? Get over it. Right. Just switch. What would you love? What would you love? What would you love? What would you love? Ask yourself that question. What would I love? Well, I'd love for this scenario. Maybe you've defined how something is going to happen to you. You don't have to know how an outcome is going to occur for you. You just have to decide it's already done. And then you feel as if it's already done. So let it go, right? Let it go. You know, this could be temporary defeat, if you will. Let it go. Do not harbor any bad feelings about anything in your life because you are destroying. You're destroying. Any negative emotion is like a Tasmanian devil that destroys everything in its path. Let it go. Let it go and choose to give your attention only on what the outcome is that you desire. All right. Thank you for asking. Kevin has a question here. What are some of your favorite switching techniques to get back on track if your thinking gets off track? Great question. And you know what? Everybody's thinking gets off track. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, how long you've been involved in these materials. Everybody's thinking will get off track. My favorite switching strategy is listening to my power life script because it works and it works very well. So I just push play on my iPhone and start listening. And that will definitely cause me to feel great and aligned and connected to what I desire. Another great switching technique and one of my favorites is what I just suggested in answer to that first question. And that is to ask yourself, what would I love? What would I love? Now, if you have to ask yourself that question 183 times in the next hour, do it because it'll put you right back on track. Now, the question is actually a three step process. What would I love? What does it feel like now that I have it? And you go straight to feeling. So that switching strategy is three steps. What would I love? You get clear on that. And then you go straight to imagining it and feeling it. All right. Those are easy techniques that anyone can apply. Thank you for asking. Okay. Sheer genius. Genius is the, the name of the next person's question. Hey, do you mind talking a bit about the topic of receiving? Thank you. All right. Great question. I love that. Okay. The topic of receiving. You see, you know, we're, we're all available or hang on. Let me, let me rephrase that. It's possible for all of us to receive receive abundance, receive love, receive anything that we desire. Whether you are receiving or not at this moment is going to be dependent upon your own beliefs. Do you believe you're worthy of receiving? Do you believe that you are easily receiving? Do you believe that you're receiving right now? It's all based on beliefs, the beliefs that you have within you. And so you must be open to receive. You've got to be open to receive. And so you've got to think, you've got to constantly be noticing what you're thinking about. You've got to constantly be noticing what you're feeling. Thank you for the kind comment there. It says, thank you for all your teachings. I appreciate that. Thank you. So when you notice... When you notice, and I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example from my own life, okay? Like when I when I went through a divorce many, many years ago to my first husband, Charles, who's a wonderful man, I remember getting to a point of having a realization of looking back because as, as uh, the quote goes, we can connect the dots looking back, right? Because we can we can look at the evidence. And I remember thinking that, there was a feeling within me of unworthiness of love. And if you have a belief that you're not worthy of love, 
success, finances, abundance, income, anything. If you feel you're not worthy of that, you will sabotage. As I said, you might attract it. I was talking about that earlier when we're talking about creating your own economy. You might attract it into your life. But if you don't believe that you're worthy of it and that you're receiving it, you will push it away. That's why this occurs. And I'm certain you've heard the stories of people that have won jackpots in the lottery. You know, they previously were poor or struggling and now sudden, bam -o. You know, they just won millions of dollars. What happens to the majority of those cases? What happens is that they end up spending the money wild, wildly, you know, donating. They may buy the homes, the cars, whatever, go on exotic trips, and they're enjoying the abundance for a relatively short period of time. And then they find themselves right back where they were before, struggling. And they're wondering what happened? What just happened? You see, they didn't believe they were worthy of it. They didn't have an abundance mentality. They continued to believe in lack. Maybe they even won the money and thought, you know, it was a fluke or a once in a lifetime thing. Whatever the reason is that you've got to be really open to receive. And that comes down to the belief that you're worthy of receiving as well. If that's a belief that you don't presently have, then you can build it just like you build a muscle in the gym. You work on it every single day reinforcing it every single day. I am worthy of success. I'm worthy of the millions. I enjoy the abundance that I have. I'm receiving more good in my life than I ever imagined possible. Like make statements of affirmations, but our affirmations don't work unless and until you feel it. Okay. They've got to be mixed with the emotion. You must feel it. You've got to feel it. So there's a uh, technique for building the belief that you are receiving whatever it is that you desire. The next question is, hello, Peggy, is it more powerful being grateful in a journey than journal than in mine? Thank you for your help. The most powerful way that you can manifest anything in your life is feeling, feeling, F-E-E-L-I-N-G, feeling the gratitude now, all day. Not once in a while, not in a journal, not writing in a journal in the morning. That's helpful. Yes. But what happens? Here's what happens to a lot of people. And this is why, you know, some people that are involved in these materials are not getting the results that they want. And they may even get to a point where they say this stuff doesn't work. Maybe some of you have been there. I was there. I've been studying personal development for about 13, 14 years. And I got to a point where I thought this stuff doesn't work. Why? I'm going to explain why. And I want you to understand this. This is so important. Absolutely essential. You see, because you have beliefs within your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind is really determining everything in your life. It's the control center of your life. Your subconscious mind is where all your programs are housed. Now, you have control in changing them, but it's going to take some time. So the beliefs that you have within you are there. They're embedded. The good news is you can change it. You can change it by, you know, putting in new ideas through your conscious mind and by connecting your emotional states to them, you can create better results. But because you've already been programmed in a certain way, it's going to take some time and a huge amount of effort to make the change in consciousness, to make the change in your subconscious mind. But the way to do it is through space, time, repetition, which means this is daily work every day, every day, daily work. That's why a Power Life script can really serve you because you listen to it every day. But here's what I suggest. Don't listen to it once. Listen to it multiple times. It's like the question about gratitude. Feel the gratitude. Yes, write in a gratitude journal. It's something I do every day. I, I wrote my gratitude journal this morning, but feel it all day long. All right. And the reason why it's not working for other people is because they may be doing the things they may be, you know, writing in their journal. They may be doing affirmations. They might be doing mirror work. They may be working with a vision board. They may be listening to their power life script and they're doing it like consciously. And then in the next moment, they just put it aside and they go about their day almost like an automated robot. Right. Because that's the way we are. We're habitual creatures. And so for a few minutes or moments, you're feeling the alignment of what you desire, but 
but then you step out of it and you habitually go back to the old way of thinking and you habitually go back to the way of feeling. Understand that negativity is poisonous. It will destroy. It destroys results. And it's not that you're not going to feel negativity, but similar to what Kevin's question was, you want to get really good at snapping yourself out of it as fast as humanly possible. You simply want to notice so that you can change it, change it, change it, change it, change it, change it, change it. In Master Key to Wealth by Dr. Joseph Murphy, which is a book on my bookshelf back there, he says that if you think a negative thought 50 times an hour, reverse it. Now, you may think a negative thought 50 times in the next couple minutes. Change it. And until you condition yourself to be a certain way, you're going to find that you're going to continue to experience what you don't want if that's the way you've been living your life. It took me years to figure this out. But it doesn't have to take you years. I've created the tools. I've created the programs. I've created the guidance to show you how to stop wasting time and how to finally get the results that you want. It's like enough already. Like I'm 63 years of age right now and 63 and a half. And I'm very blessed to live an extraordinary life. But none of it happened by accident. It happened on purpose. It happened because I made a committed decision to invest in myself, to work on myself, and to do it every single day. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that if you want your life to change, you must change. I wrote about that in Savvy Wisdom in my 19th book. And if you don't have a copy of Savvy Wisdom, get one. Here's Savvy Wisdom 1 and Savvy Wisdom 2. But I talked about that in the very beginning. They're both parables. They're written as fiction stories. But in the beginning of Savvy Wisdom, Sophie meets this wise man who says to her, you know, if you want your life to change, you have to change. That's where I was many years ago when I met Bob Proctor. And that's who Savvy is based on in my books is Bob Proctor. His materials helped change my life. But Bob didn't change my life. And other master teachers didn't change my life. What changed my life was Peggy McCall. That's why my life changed. And if you want your life to change, I can guide you. But it's going to be up to you whether you're actually implementing it or not. And I suggest you do because the rewards are amazing. They're absolutely incredible. All right. Our next question is. Oh, that's an interesting question. Does the universe have intelligence to listen to us? Definitely. Definitely has intelligence to listen to us. You see, the universe has very specific laws that when you work in harmony with them, you will understand how you can manifest with great ease. So yes, the universe is always responding. It's responding to your emotions. That's why it's so important that you feel as if you already are the success that you desire to be. You've got to feel it and you got to feel it now. And you got to live in the now experience, even though there's no evidence of it in sight. It will manifest absolutely with certainty because the universe is listening to you, paying attention to you. You see, whatever you're feeling, you're working with the law of vibration, right? You will attract back to you how you're feeling. Thank you. Sue says, how do you how do you quantum leap into breaking old income caps? Brilliant question. I love it, Sue. Sue, you're an ideal candidate for skipping levels. You should talk to Vladdy about that. She's on the call right now. Just uh, reach out to Vladdy or Vladdy will reach out to you. Uh, we have a program called Skipping Levels, and it's all about that. It's about skipping levels. It's uh, have quantum leaps in your life. How do you have a quantum leap experience in your life? Well, number one, you decide that it's already done. You determine what that is. What is your quantum leap? What is the kind of income that you would love to be earning? You can definitely do it. And Sue, you may want to consider joining MSI author, MSI entrepreneur. We'll put the links in here for you. It's msiauthor.com or msientrepreneur.com. Either one will take you to the same place. We're starting a brand new program and it's all live. It's going to be spread out over 100 days. And it starts July 21st and we put it up. It's available. It's a very intensive program and it's all designed around creating uh, income at a whole new level, quantum leap kind of income, creating your own economy. Really? Have you ever used a hypnotist to change thinking patterns as another tool? What was your experience? That's a great question. Thank you, Sue, for asking. Uh, the answer is no. So the short answer is no, I have not. And the reason is this, 
The reason why I've chosen uh, not to use hypnotism, not that there's anything wrong with it, because I, I believe it actually works, but it's whether you believe it works or not is, is essential. And the reason why I don't is because I want to choose what's going on and going into my mind. So I'm choosing what I'm allowing to go into my, into my um, <clears throat> ears, you know, into my mind. I'm choosing what I'm giving my attention to. And even though I'm certain that hypnotism works, and I know there's many, many success stories of it. And I think a big part of why it works is because people believe it will work. It's like, if you believe your belief, it's like believe in your belief will create the fact. That's a quote by William James. Believe in your belief will create the fact. Like if you believe hypnotism is a solution or one of the solutions or that's going to work for you, it will probably work. Why? Because you had the belief that it will work. You see, mindset is everything when it comes to success. And in every program that I do, mindset is a big part of it, if not the biggest part of it. And the reason is because you've got to have the right mi mindset. It's like across the street from us, they're building a home. And uh, we were chatting with the owner the other day and we we're out taking our dogs for a walk. The first thing that they did with that home is they put a solid foundation and they've got concrete there and bricks. I mean, it's a very solid foundation. They had a plan and they built the foundation. And I believe that if we equate that to our life, you create the plan is what would you love? What's the outcome look like? And then you have to build a solid foundation. What's the solid foundation? That's the thing that's going to hold it up, right? And the solid foundation is the mindset that you have. It's the way you're thinking. It's the way you're feeling. It's how you're acting. It's the behaviors that you're involved in. You want to break old patterns. You want to stop the limiting beliefs. You want to stop the sabotage. And you want to get to a point where you've got a solid foundation that supports you in everything that you do. And what's fascinating with all of this, with all of what, you know, I teach or we offer inside Dynamic Destinies is that it works on anything. There's a commercial on, on television for a product called Frank's Hot Sauce. And there's a little old lady who does this commercial. And the commercial basically says, try this stuff on anything, you know, hot sauce. And I think about the business that we're in here at Dynamic Destinies. It's like Power Life Script. Try it on anything. I've used my Power Life Script to manifest dream homes. I've used my Power Life Script to manifest additional waterfront properties. I've used my, my Power Life Script to manifest my income, my success in my business, my New York Times bestseller, my wonderful relationship with my amazing husband. You know, any goal that I've set for myself, I've used my Power Life Script. Try it on anything and it will work absolutely works and it works for everyone in every situation regardless of where you come from regardless of what you've created or not created in the past what i suggest is you want to leave the past where it belongs in the past behind you you can start new you can start fresh you can start in this moment and just say no more no more settling for less it's your time to shine it's your time to create great success and we would love to help you there I believe Laddie put a link in there, a discovery call. If you feel like you'd like to book an appointment with her, then uh, we'll put the link in Instagram. We'll put it on YouTube as well. Uh, you can certainly book an appointment with Laddie if you want to find out which program of ours is the best fit for you, because we are here to serve you. Our purpose at Dynamic Destinies is, is to help you up level your life. Okay, we're going to call it a wrap for today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Jen, for running around to the platforms and gathering all the questions. Thank you, Vladdy, for being here and for co-serving with me. I really appreciate all of you, and we'll see you again real soon. By the way, we're doing an event next week, and uh, it is an event on quantum leaps. It's called Easy Quantum Leaps. We're going to be delivering five free sessions you can type in easyquantumleaps.com. I believe that's the URL. And uh, if not, you can email support at peggymccall.com. We'll make sure you get the link and that you get registered. But we do these events every once in a while. We've got an event coming up soon, totally free. Would love to have you there. Love to be there to serve you as well. All right, everyone. Thank you and have yourself a wonderful day. Bye-bye for now.